Right, what's up everybody? We are in San Diego, California today and we're gonna go over how to photograph seascapes. We're gonna go over composition, we're gonna go over some basic gear, the gear that I use, and we're gonna spend the better part of the video on filters. Six stop and 10 stop neutral density filters. We're gonna go over graduated filters. And if we're lucky, tomorrow morning we're gonna explore some sea caves. After that, we're gonna head over to La Jolla Shores and take the GoPro, do some snorkeling, and we might be able to get some leopard sharks. They usually don't get here till August or September, but you know, it's mid-July now. Go over there, see if we can find them. So stay tuned. About my gear that I have I shoot long exposure photography when I'm using my filters obviously you want a tripod that's you know one of the most important things to have is a tripod you need your camera steady for those long exposures anything over even you know a 30th of a second or a tenth of a second without vibration reduction uh, you're gonna need a tripod for unless you want blurry pictures also what you really need is a, a trigger release whether it's on a cord or whether it's wireless that I have when you get past 30 seconds you got to set your shutter speed to bulb mode and then just time it, whether you're a timer on your phone or count. Uh, I prefer a timer on your phone because uh, once you get past the 30 seconds, you got like four minute exposures, two minute exposures, one minute exposures. Like I said, I even had 15 minute exposures. You got to put it in bulb, but you're gonna need a trigger to do that. You're gonna need, a, like I said, whether you plug it in or whether it's wireless, you're gonna need to have that. And it also helps too to have a wireless one because I like to put myself in the photo and to do that, you know, either have a wireless release or set your uh, camera to uh, interval shooting and it'll shoot intervals and you can go out there, take your pictures, come back in, you know, it continuously shoots that way you can get yourself in the photo, which, you know, I think really looks really nice too. So that's kind of the basics for equipment. All right guys, so I think I found my spot here. Uh, what I'm doing, I'm gonna show you guys my composition and why I chose what I chose. Uh, the first thing I wanna talk about with composition is leading lines. Now, what leading lines are is uh, lines that kind of draw your eye into the photo and kind of lead them towards, you know, your subject or whatever it is you're wanting the viewer to focus on. And every one of your pictures should have kind of a purpose. It shouldn't just be like a picture, like, like the ocean. You know, it, it's beautiful to watch the ocean and the sunset, but if you just go up and take a snapshot of the ocean with just the water and the sky, as far as the picture goes, it's not gonna turn out as good. Looking at it, obviously, you know, it is beautiful. But when you take a photo, you want to have a purpose. You want to make sure that you have leading lines. You want to use the rule of thirds, which is you want to keep your subject in a third of the frame, you know, whether it's the top third, the bottom third. So the way I usually do it is you'll have your like your foreground interest or your anchor, which is like, you know, something that, that draws your eye in, like a leading line, or it could be, you know, some rocks in the foreground. I say keep your uh, your subject in the, in the thirds. And as far as the ocean goes, generally you want to keep the horizon out of the middle of the frame. You don't want it in the middle. Usually you'll want, you know, your foreground in one third. You'll want the water, the ocean, the horizon at the second third, and then your sky as your top third. Uh, usually that's that's the best way to go. If you're just starting out in photography, I would try to stick with the rules of composition. Once you, once you get really used to using the rule of thirds, uh, you can break them as long as it's deliberate. I'll do another video on what I mean by that, because that, you know, Right now, I just wanna to talk to you guys about the composition that I got, and I'm gonna show you guys here. So I have these rocks as a leading line out to the sunset, and the sunset's gonna be my subject. So the leading line is the rock. I had a hard time kind of finding composition here because there's just so many people out here, and of course, everybody wants to come out the sunset cliffs for the sunset, so. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you guys how I use my filters. The difference between just without a filter I'm gonna put my six stop on there and I'm gonna put my 10 stop on there. I'm also gonna use my ND grad filters. Since there's a flat horizon, there's no mountains, there's no hills or anything to break up that horizon, it's flat. I use a hard lined, a hard grad filter. 
So it's just a straight line. It's not gradual. It's not a soft grad. It's just a straight hard grad line. I put it right on the horizon. And what that does is that evens out the light. Because if you look, the sky is a lot brighter than the foreground. So to even that out, I use a grad filter and I put it on and set the, the dark part of the filter over the skyline. That kind of evens out and I got a three stop grad filter on there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put that on there and you guys are gonna see a big difference between the sky and the foreground and then after the filter, just a huge difference. Then I'm gonna show you guys my six stop and then my 10 stop and I'll show you guys the difference what it does to the water, how it slows down my shutter, how it softens the water and gives you that nice long exposure. And it's gonna give some nice, cause we got some really nice clouds. So it's gonna do some really cool things with the clouds. I think we have a really nice sunset. So I'll show you guys here in just a second. See how it makes a huge difference? I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy how much, you know, it brings down those highlights and it makes it look real nice and it makes it easier in post-processing too, you know, so you don't have to mess with the highlights. You don't have to bracket exposures as much, you know, there's, there's gonna be times where you do, but. All right, so I got the six stop ND filter on there now and I was at one 200th of a second. Uh, my ISO was set at 64 and my, uh, now it's at one quarter of a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the picture. You always gotta make sure that you focus before you put your ND filter on there, either the six stop or the 10 stop. Because it's so dark, when you put it on there, it's like putting just a, uh, a cover over it. It's, it's so dark. So uh, you focus beforehand and put your lens in manual. Make sure obviously you're on a tripod and then you slide your, uh, your filter on there. Then you take the shot. So we'll go ahead and we'll take the shot now with the 10 stop, but I'll show you guys the difference here. And it's gonna be a four second exposure. I got the leaf filter system on there and it's, it's a whole system. It's pretty expensive. I mean, you can do the same thing with the screw in that screws into your lens type. You just got to make sure you get the right size for your lens. Each lens has a different thread size. Uh, mine is a Tamron 24 to 70 and it's an 82 millimeter um, lens thread. So my whole system fits and I got a, an adapter that goes on to my long lens, which is a 77 millimeter. So one thing I do love about these long exposure filters is it creates a mood and I absolutely love the way that it looks. I mean, it creates, like that's the first thing you look at when you see a long exposure, especially of the ocean, when you got clouds also, and as the light gets lower here, as the sun gets lower and dips behind the horizon, uh, the shutter speed is gonna get longer, up to four, five, 15 minutes even. And you wanna keep your ISO as low as possible, 164, whatever the lowest is your camera goes. Use your cards, because a lot of times your camera meter won't set it properly. So it may look like on top of your camera, if you look at your histogram, it may look like it's properly exposed, but usually an app like PhotoPills works really well because they have an exposure on there. You go on there, you type what your exposure is and then how many stops you want to add on, say a 10 stop, and it'll give you your settings. It's actually really nice. So that's what I do here. And, and I, I love the way that it moved, you know, the mood that it creates. There we go, we'll do some more. And we'll, when the sun sets here, we'll just keep going. And the shutter speed is gonna get longer as the light gets lower, the light's gonna even out. And I think we get some really good stuff here. So let's check it out. All right, so we're here at uh, the La Jolla Tide Pools uh, doing a little scouting of tonight's uh, sunset. But we didn't have much luck with the leopard sharks, didn't see any at La Jolla Shore, so. Uh, but I think this time, what we're gonna do for tonight's sunset is we're gonna get down low instead of being up high like we were last night. Get down low right up on the rocks, get really low on the rocks and use them kind of as a foreground interest. And then uh, use maybe some leading lines. There's a lot of channels in here. 
on really interesting rocks. So we're gonna try and maybe get that in the foreground and then we'll see if the, uh, it's pretty overcast right now, but you never know what's gonna happen. So hopefully we'll get a little bit better light than we did yesterday at sunset, but you know, we'll see. But let's check it out and uh, see you guys here shortly. So I found my place here. I'm gonna take the picture. As you can see, I got some leading lines with these crazy rocks that are in the way. It's really nice. I like it here. All right, now we got a dreary day again. I think the sunset's gonna kind of be like it was yesterday. There's a bunch of clouds. There's a little bit of pockets. You can see the sun rays kind of coming through over there. So it's pretty cool, but I think it's gonna be kind of dead. Uh, there's a couple things you can do for overcast days. Uh, one of them is think of a black and white picture. You wanna maybe go monochrome, either in camera or later on converting it to black and white. Uh, use some dodging and burning to really bring out the drama and think about mood. If you don't like black and white, I have a solution that I like to use for shooting on overcast days and I'm going to show you right now. My red jacket. This red pops so much and it really livens up a photo. So I'm going to put it on and I'm going to go stand out on one of these points here when I take my photo. I put my sixth up Andy filter on. It's going to be about 8 to 10 seconds. So I'm going to set to 10 seconds right now and take a picture and see how it looks. Now if I put my 10 stop on there, it's going to be about 2 minutes. So I'm going to do a 2 minute exposure here. I think that's what I'm going to start using. I, I think I like the 2 minute exposure, but for me to put myself in the picture, I'm not going to stand out there for 2 minutes. So uh, 12 seconds seems like it's more reasonable. So I got my wireless trigger and I'm going to go stand out there and I'm going to set it off. But and then later on I'm going to use my 10 stop and do my 2 minute exposure and really create a nice mood, an ethereal type mood with the picture which is what I love with this long, uh, these long exposure uh, you know, photography uh, filters that I have on here. So let's see how it looks. Hi right, guys, one thing I wanted to tell you uh, to follow up with, when you're out here for a long, you know, extended period of time, it's a good idea to take off the filters and adjust your exposure, then set it back to bulb and, and you know, calculate your, your stops and what it's going to be after that because your, your exposure is always changing. You know where the sun is, the sun's going down with cloud cover, so, you know, it's, it's a good idea after every couple of shots or so just to, you know, like I said, take your filters off get your exposure and remember to always put it back on bulb if it's longer than 30 seconds. I seriously like every single time will forget to put it on bulb and wonder what the heck is going on. It takes me a second to realize that I forgot to put it back. Get the Photo Pills app or there's a couple different ones. I think Magic Lantern maybe is another one, but Photo Pills is just for iPhones. It'll give you, you put in the exact exposure, uh, exact shutter speed, the ISO and your f-stop, your aperture, and then it'll calculate your shutter speed or whatever you're trying to figure out. So photo fills is a really good app to do. Sun's pretty much set now. It was another kind of a flat, flat sunset, which you know it happens a lot here. So either way, um, that's pretty much it for this uh, trip. Tomorrow we're heading home. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys learned something from it. If you like this, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, hit the like button. Uh, leave a comment if you want, and I'll see you guys.